We're your trusted partners right by your side. Evergreen Implement. For all your farming needs, we're your go-to guy. Evergreen Implement. Professional solutions and leading edge technology. Small enough to know you, large enough to serve you. Your locally owned John Deere dealer. Evergreen Implement. Okay, one thing with any sprayer, um, we need to make sure everything's configured right to begin with. Let me make the screen brighter so we can see it. Just because you got the sprayer and somebody was running it last year, were they running it right last year? Um, maybe they had some other attachment on it and then you got the sprayer in on, or we got it on trade, sold it to you, you bought it from your neighbor, whatever. How did they have it set up? So, to begin with, we need to go through any sprayer, make sure it's set up right. Even if you're the one running it last year, check it to make sure. Occasionally, we have had updates that we've ran, especially with the um, pull-behind sprayers with John Deere rate controllers. You run an update, and it changes something. So, you think, ran fine two weeks ago when I tested it. I ran the update. I'm out running now, and it doesn't respond quite like it used to. So, we're going to go into our menu. In this case, we're going to go into our sprayer. We're going to go to the setup. The arrow up, pointing to the dot. Anytime you have that, that's going to be set up. Just look at everything. Here's where we're also going to change our um, our spray rates that we have, and just go through everything. Look and see what you have. <coughs> uh, minimum spray pressure. Okay, here we have it set at 15 pounds. Um, that's one thing, one setting you're going to want to check. Because remember, we talked about our nozzle bodies here being a 15 pound check or 12 to 15 pound. Um, this way here, no matter how slow you go, it's only going to allow it to go down to 15 PSI. So it's going to keep spraying for you. It's going to over apply, but at least it's not going to give you skips out there. So we have that set. Um, spray off pressure is 40 PSI. So when you turn your booms off, it's going to be maintaining the 40 there in your booms ready to go for you. Um, then tank volume. That's pretty easy to set up, um, figure out. Um, the boom charge, a lot of guys will run auto, and so what that's doing is as you're coming into your headland to where it's going to be turning back on, it allows it to um, basically start a little early for that. Dean, have you played with the boom charge on yours much? No? Nope? Okay. Um, normally people have it in auto and don't know they have anything else they could play with on it. So um, alarms, if you want to have any alarms on there, you can turn them on. Foam markers, we have this one turned off. Um, then, in fact, what you'll see now, more and more sprayers are coming even without foam markers just because um, they have um, auto track on them. Why pack the extra weight? Um, in some cases, like with the new 40 series, they have um, direct injection tanks back there instead of foam marker tanks. So we'll look at our boom setup. Number of sections, how many sections do you have, and what is the section spacing? Um, why we need to make sure that's right is because we're running section control on these where we turn the sections on and off according to what we programmed in. If we tell it that there's 10 nozzles on that section and there's only seven, I, you're going to have spots spraying when they shouldn't be and you'll have an interesting pattern out there in your field. So make sure that's right. Don't just guess. Don't assume that uh, it was 90 foot before um, and or that's what we told you it was, was a 90 foot sprayer. It may be or it may be an uh, 89 foot sprayer. Um, depending on your nozzle spacing is what's going to drive what that actual spacing is. Vehicle setup on this, and this is just the service hours and stuff on there. Um, just seeing that, an interesting thing on a self-propelled sprayer, especially some of these used ones we've got, um, they may have, this one doesn't show right there, but um, look at your engine hours and then look at your spray hours. There's one sprayer we had come through that had like 1,200 engine hours on it and just over 250 spray hours. So it gives you an idea of how much time they're actually running through the field. The rest of the time they're flushing their booms or driving to a field. So, uh, and some of them, they're changing chemicals often enough. They are doing a lot of um, rinsing of the booms and tanks and stuff. So, you know, go through, set up, check that. On the rate controller, we're, we'll split up later. Um, if people want to see that on the rate controller, I'll go over that. and. Paul will go more over more of the setup on here. 
um, just so you can see that. We need to get that part of it right to begin with. If you don't have the setup right, you're not going to get anything else right on it. Um, and there's something else I wanted to talk about there. The boom fold, um, we're going to just mention a little bit on. On the um, 49 series, it's an auto boom, or you have a choice of an auto boom. So um, later, Dean will probably wing his up. Dean, do you normally run the auto boom on yours? Works pretty slick. Um, but one thing with folding the booms, you do need to make sure you do and is having the booms in the right location when you fold them. If you have them in the wrong location when they swing in, they're going to swing in and crash into your railings. and um, They're going to come in quite fast, but if they're set in the down position, uh, at, making sure I'm agreeing with Paul on this one, um, on the 30 series they go in the down position when you wing them up. On the 4700s I believe they're in the up and I couldn't tell you on the 10s and 20s. I'd have to you know, check the operator's manual for that. You still got to make sure they're balanced though. Yep, you got to make sure they're balanced and so like in a fairly flat yard you go out on a hillside and you try to do it it's not going to um, fold right so you might have to swing one in part way manually to catch up with the other to get the weight different so you do have to make sure on that, but the big thing is making sure they're in the right position, they're down and they're not all the way up um, when you wing them up. Um, they do set down in the cradle and there isn't a whole lot of extra room um, to get them out of that cradle. So play with that, um, preferably where there's not much else around, um, because it, it, when you see us folding these here in a little bit, I, how the back swings around and then the, fore, or the front or the intersection swings forward. It takes up quite a bit of room, especially if you're running the auto fold on the 49s. When that's folding, it's raising everything up and dropping everything, and then you'll have three functions going on at the same time. So if you've never seen one of those fold, we'll get a demonstration on that. Um, they're, they're impressive to let them fold on their own. A couple other things. On here, the eductor, it's on the other side. We don't need to go over there. But when you're running the eductor, um, if you just have the machine at an idle and you have water in your tank already, it's going to basically be running backwards and back flushing into your eductor. So you got to make sure you kick your RPM up on that to where it sucks it into the tank right. And I think it's with that, Paul? We'll let Paul, or Paul talk about the auto boom, the setup of the auto boom, um, and just some things to look at on it. Um, one thing I will say, um, I talked with Russ about this the other day. He had called in his auto boom wasn't working right. Um, when you're running these auto booms, especially out here in the yard, um, you're sitting there running them and playing with them, and if you sprayed water, these sensors will go down and reflect off that puddle of water, and they'll do all kinds of things. Normally they just sit there and um, just dance a little bit going like that, but you're seeing the whole thing shaking. But if they're really hitting the water puddle good, um, I guess, Russ, one of yours went up quite a ways. It just go, it was going like this. Yeah. It just wouldn't quit. Yeah. As soon as you pull off your puddle, your problem will normally go away. So um, that's all in the sensitivity of it, which Paul will talk about that. And go with this? Sure. Okay. I'll get out of your way. We'll just go over the auto boom. Nobody can really probably see this. It's kind of far away, but you can come in. We, he doesn't uh, bite. <laughs> yeah. So on the bottom left-hand corner here, you have Boom Track Pro, and it gives you your left height sensor, center center uh, height sensor, and the right sensor. I believe it has five sensors on this. Um, you're only going to see the three unless you actually go into that Boom Track Pro, and then you'll see all five the different heights. So also, if you're on that other page. And you're only seeing the three, and maybe you have it set at 36 inches, and you're seeing it, you know, maybe it's at 38 or 40 inch, and you're saying, hey, how come that thing's not coming down? Well, go in to your Boom Track Pro and watch all your sensors, because it's taken into consideration what your inner sensor is also. So that might, you know, give you a little differential as far as if you're seeing those three sensors, you actually have five sensors and three not. Like, so if it sees your inner sensor is at 36 inches, it's going to keep that boom up off the ground. Um, so all you're seeing is your three outer, your two outers, and your middle sensor. Um, you can also lose. Uh, calibration on these sometimes on every sensor there's a number I think it's a five-digit number so it's good to have those numbers written down 
uh, maybe in your back pocket. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes you can lose that, and so you have no auto boom. What you have to do is uh, basically go in there, and you have to calibrate. Well, this right here, you can do your offsets as far as you notice on our sensors. We're about two inches off the, where the boom is right there on that one, and the outer one, if you look way out there, we're about oh, six inches up. So we can set those offsets also in here as far as where those sensors are and location for our boom. Um, if we don't, then it will give us a false reading also. Same thing with the inners. You can do an inner sensor offset. So this says it's one, foot, one inch, and we also measure from the center of the boom out to where those sensors are and tell it where it's at on that boom also as far as the sensor placements. Um, to do Boom Track Pro, you have sensor target mode. You can do ground or canopy. Uh, canopy is basically, it's just going to not reflect off anything. It's going to see that the first item that it sees. Uh, if you're doing, going out there spraying crop, canopy would be a good way to go. Uh, ground is going to look through its first, the first thing it sees and go down to the ground. Um, normally on most spraying, I leave everything on ground. If you're out there spraying something that's already established itself, you might want to go to canopy. But for the most part, I put everything at ground. Broom track response. All on heavy yeah. stubble. What, what's your... I would do ground on heavy okay. stubble too. It, it, yeah. That won't bother. No, it shouldn't bother. It, it, what it'll do is look through that and see that ground first. You know, if you're wanting to, uh, if you're wanting a certain height range, um, basically it's going to go off that ground. You know, stubble. You know, it could be different heights and everything. Yeah. If you want to go spray, so I'd go off the ground on that. Boom track response. There, uh, I think Russ was having it dance sound like the other day too, and I also hopped in here actually today and seen it was on high, and that's going to help make it dance more too, because just like Jim said, it was reflecting, but we also had our sensitivity set on high, so it was responding a lot quicker than it should have been. And what happens there, uh, we start getting that, that center boom also has a pivot on there. So if we start getting that dancing going on, it's trying to, it's constantly trying to react and, and make corrections for that. It's still maybe a little too sensitive, so we could bump that back down. I bumped it to medium, that's normally where I'll set them. Um, there again, Dean, I, don't, I think you're running on high, aren't you? Well, I was. And, tell you, he, and he's playing with his orifices um, as far as his response time for his uh, raise and lower on his. So he might go back. We'll see what happens here. He just played with that this, uh, this fall yesterday. or winter. So yesterday, this spring. Um, we can do target height mode. We can do individual. So they're all basically going off of their whatever set point we put those sensors at. Or we can do where they match the center frame. So whatever that center frame uh, set point height is, then they'll match that center frame. And there should be <coughs> what we do is once we have it, basically we got uh, two pieces of the pie there. Same thing, just like Auto Track, two pieces of the pie. Basically, you're going to turn Auto Boom on, and then you're going to hit your uh, button one, I believe, on the hydro handle, and that's going to enable your Auto Boom height. So, just like. Uh, uh, our auto steer. We need to have those three pieces of the pie to have our auto boom. Let me see if I can find out. Jim, do you have to remember where we go to calibrate that uh, those sensors? Uh, sprayer the calibration. There should be a picture of the gun. Let's that. calibrate. Um, a couple different things here. You can do the Boom Track Pro calibrate level. So if they're off level, you can go out there and actually set it where you want it to be. I think it's at 36 inches is what it tells you to measure it at. Measure it all and then recalibrate that. So that's going to put that at level. If you have one side 36 inches, the other side's at, you know, maybe at 40, but it says it's 36, we can go in and recalibrate that. Um, I think that's what I wanted right there. Down below is Calibrate Room Track Pro Sensor. This is what I was looking for. We're going to hit that, and that's those numbers that I told you that are on, on each sensor. And we have to make sure they're in the right location. So it has to know what sensor is assigned to whether L1, L2, center, R1, or R2. Um, and like I said, I have seen that not very often, but I have seen it where it just loses those sensors information and won't let you go to auto boom. Um, good place to check to make sure that you have those sensors assigned. Something else with those sensors? Let's say you do fail one of your sensors. You can run on three sensors, but you can't run on four. So you have to take another one out, and then I don't remember which position is in the end position you end up running on, yeah. two ends in the center. So that can um, get you going in a bind. Something else with the sensors, we're talking about reading them.
if you go over to the sensor and wave your hand underneath it, it probably won't do anything. You go wave a piece of paper under it, it'll work just fine. It has to have a broader area than just your hand. Um, but if you ever do that, just make sure nobody's there leaning over your boom, <laughs> because if they're leaning over the boom talking to each other, as you wave your hand underneath it when it's engaged, that boom will snap up on it. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, later we'll have the auto boom on, I think, so we'll let everybody know so nobody's standing there over the boom when we're doing that. But um, something we see. Go ahead. Uh, last thing I'll go over also is if you don't have uh, uh, your auto boom sensors on these self-propelled sprayers, there also is a boom return to, return to height you can calibrate. So what you do is you calibrate all the way in the low position, all the way in the high position, and what you'll do is you'll set it to wherever you want to spray at. So let's say it's 36 inches. Um, once you calibrate that, you can just go ahead and hit down on your main boom on your hydro handle, and what it'll do is lower it to that 36 inches and stop. To get it to continue past there, you'll hit it again. So you can actually kind of set a break, set that set point to where you want to spray at without these auto boom sensors. It just instead of having to look back there, okay, am I at 36? Am I at 36? You can actually go through and calibrate that, and then just push down your hydro handle and remember that, and it'll calibrate that 36 inch height spray height. So small enough to know you. Large enough to serve you, your locally owned John Deere dealer, Evergreen Implement.